Welcome to The Founder's Mind, a podcast powered by the Kadar Group. This is your host, Adam Mutchler. Before we drop into the conversation with Spike and Jonah, some exciting news. The Founder's Mind is entering 2020 with a sponsor. We're currently producing season two to be sponsored by Upside Business Travel. We couldn't be more hyped to work with Upside, and we're looking forward to sharing more soon. And now to the episode. We have Spike Mendelson and Jonah Goldman. Will you hear us chat about what they're building at Plant Burger, Spike's journey as a chef, and Jonah's lifelong mission in promoting a plant-based lifestyle. Listen in as we dive into their passion for food, social justice, building brands, and beyond. We're on the Founders Minds. I've got Spike Mendelson here. I got Jonah Goldman, founder of Plant Burgers, plant spelled with no vowels because it's 2019, 2020. And we're going to have a conversation. Talk about what's popping in the food scene with y'all. I love it. Excellent. Thanks for having us. Thank you for having us. Spike, I know you have a, you've got quite, quite the career. Um, you've been, you've opened a lot of spots. You were on Top Chef. Um, I'd love to hear a little bit about you and your words. Um, and then we'll definitely talk Plant Burger because I know that's kind of what's front of mind. Yeah. Uh, Joni here, so why wouldn't we? Yes. <laughs> Full swagged out too. You guys can't see him right now, but he yeah. is plant burger from head He's to toe to right now. Plant <laughs> He's a change you wish to see in the world, logo. I mean, I like that. Yeah, good for his. Yeah, so me and my words. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, <laughs> how do, this, this is always funny talking about yourself. Uh, I don't know. Like you know, I've had a you know, um, I've had a really you know, I think authentic career. It's kind of how I like I to like describe that, yeah. it. You know, um, it's really been like the path that I've paved for myself uh, obviously a lot of help along the way and a lot of great support family and friends but uh you know I kind of just you know I really you know grew up in the industry really so I come from a big Greek Jewish family of restaurateurs no oh, nice uh, based out of Montreal which are also in the deli if you know Schwartz's and yeah, yeah, Montreal, yeah, yeah. That's, that's my family over there oh wow okay which is you know very Jewish now Jewish yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, Emphasis on Jew. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, I, I, you know, I have some real fond memories just growing up in my grandfather's restaurants. You know, I remember, you know, break dancing on his bar dance floor to Michael Jackson and cooking in the kitchen and table side Caesar salads. And, you know, I come from a really a foodie family, basically, nice. if you will, like big time. Not only did we always cook our big Greek meals at home, but we were, you know, all in on the restaurant industry, which is, you know... You know, I think Anthony Berdan used to describe it as a subculture. Sure. And, you know, just the restaurant industry. Yeah, and, yeah. and I always lived up to that, I, you know, and, and believe that myself. So, but anyways, you know, great career, you know, you know, at a young age to start to learn about food and the business, uh, a lot less about food, actually, a mm -hmm. lot more about the business. Yeah. There's a lot of entrepreneurs. And then, um, you know, kind of you know, did not want to become a chef, did not want to be in the family business or industry. It's like that typical, you know, that rebellious, that, the rebellious, like, I don't want to do what you guys do. And, uh, it was, it, it also wasn't really too glorifying, you know, um, in, you know, or the early nineties, you yeah, know, yeah, for when sure. I was 10, it was the like, sex appeal was different. Yeah. Sex appeal was different. Like we weren't really a lot outside the kitchen because, you know, uh, we were, you know, degenerates and uh, just cooking and and um it wasn't as a celebrated thing and you know I, I grew up in the dish pit so I didn't really look at this industry as being like so glorifying and uh you know dish I thought, pit meaning cleaning dishes yeah cleaning dishes just Watch for me. any any if any lingo comes out there I might call it out yeah good good lingo yeah dish pit <laughs> uh I always tell people I was born on a prep table because that's how my life is felt but um, yeah, you know, and uh, I try to get away from it. I try to, you know, being in the club business or the film business, and um, really kind of like that. The one thing, like one big huge event that happened in my life was the passing of my grandfather, which mm -hmm. I was very close to, uh, and was kind of like the man in the, the industry. He was the older brother of four that ran, ran like that that thick Montreal uh, restaurant business. And, um, you know, uh, he developed lung cancer and uh, my parents, you know, we were in Florida running a restaurant uh, there, a Spanish restaurant called Pepin's. And my parents were like, hey, like, we got to go to Montreal and take care of, you know, your grandfather. And, and um, you know, we'd love for you to come back to the restaurant because at that time I was being super rebellious, doing things that you weren't really supposed to and help us out, you know, take care of the restaurant. You know, I think I was maybe 18 at the time. 
So at 18 years old, I got dropped like this fine dining restaurant in my lap for about a, a year uh, while my, my mother was cooking, you know, meals for my grandfather every day and just being there for him. And, uh, you know, basically- so you, got for, to you got to spend time with him towards the end? Yeah, I, 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 I was flying up and down, but really I was spending a lot more time at the oh, restaurant oh, in Florida, Florida, Florida. while it, my parents it, and my mother was in Montreal. Uh, and, you know, I just kind of worked on the details of the restaurant and- and just kind of cleaned it up because it was dirty and I'm OCD. And, and mm-hmm. like, it was just like when they finally came back and like saw the restaurant running the way it was, it was a little bit more profitable. It was running a little cleaner and so forth. So they basically made a deal with me. They're like, Hey, stick around another year, you know, just to show us that you're, you're actually serious, serious about this and uh, we'll send you to any culinary school. And I was like, all right, fine. At that point, I didn't really have too much direction in my life. I wasn't too inspired. I didn't know what, you know, the fuck was happening. Uh, and, and uh, you know, I was doing all the wrong things. You know, I ran away from school, ran away from the house, like shacked up with this 30-year-old woman with a kid. It was just like, it was disastrous. <laughs> uh, it was like major disaster. Uh, but it was that moment. In a my, lot of learning. Yeah, a lot of learning. And, uh, but, you know, I held my end of the deal and so did my parents. And they sent me to the Culinary Institute of America, which is like one of the best schools you can go to. Um, yeah, it's also known as CIA. CIA, not yes. the one that everyone thinks yes. about. I learned how to kill people. <laughs> no, uh, and uh, basically, uh, that's kind of where I got the inspiration, right? So, I, you know, first class, first couple, couple classes, I was amongst other, you know, adults and kids. They they had no really age group, right, mm-hmm. for culinary school, and people didn't know how to make a hollandaise or make a beef stock or make a veg stock or like all these things I grew up making and yeah, yeah. all of a sudden I was like, Oh, all right. I you finally, had a little head start. Yeah. I had a little head start. And then I finally, it was like, Oh, I know, like I have a talent of some sort, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, because I wasn't a musician. I was awful with instruments. I had like this artistry in me. Yeah, the I just didn't know how to express it yeah. at all. And I was having a lot of trouble with that yeah, trying yeah. to figure out how to express it. And, um, and it was through food. That's so, amazing. So that's kind of like what started my career. And then from there, I just went for broke, you know, I went to train in France, in the north of France, and worked under some really elite chefs there, and and, uh, traveled Europe a little bit more, and worked for Thomas Keller in Yountville at Bouchon, and Sierra Mascioni in New York. So I went for these high-level, great chefs, great restaurateurs. It's like, you know, that's who I was studying while I was at the culinary school, like the Jacques Pecpens, the Sierra Mascionis, the Daniel Blues, the Alan Ducasses, like, all these famous, I was very three Michelin star driven. Yeah, yeah. That's like kind of like the apprenticeship I had in France. That's kind of like where I grew yeah. up. So I had this high standard of cuisine uh, ingrained to, at a young age. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's kind of what, you know, spearheaded my career. And then, you know, the rest is history. You're a little, top chef. Little history, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know, I don't know how much you want me to go in. No, I, we'll, I, we'll could talk, I could talk forever, we'll but... You know what's interesting, though? Yeah. Like, you bring up this sort of like some of these some of these incredible chefs, mm. like Hall of Fame quality mm-hmm. chefs. And I watch Top Chef. I watch, you know, um, what's the Netflix show? That Chef's Table. Jeff you Table watch all Chef. these amazing shows about food. And you hear people like yourself talking about all these incredible chefs. And the stories of how people got into those kitchens yeah. almost seem unattainable today. Yeah. Like there's so many people trying to do this thing now yeah. that like it almost seems like less possible. Like there was some guy, I forget what restaurant, but it was, he was like a South American chef and he's like, yeah, I was like 18 and I wrote a letter to the chef in France yeah. and one of the guys you mentioned and he's like, and he responded and I went. Yeah, I just moved. It's and, so like, funny. Worked. I mean, like, I, that, I feel like that's not as possible. <laughs> well, that's like, I mean, it's funny you bring that up because my story to go work for Gerard Boyer, which had like three Michelin stars for twenty years in a Relais Chateau in the north of France, is like your top tier yeah. kind of like you know there is no grander yeah. thing you can do. Um, and that was that took me nine months of applications, and basically what was happening is everyone at culinary school has to get like an externship means basically yeah. for two, three months, they have to go somewhere during the school season to like experience. Most people go like to the Ritz Carlton in the Bahamas mm-hmm. or like, you know, like all these resorts in Florida and just like- Is that their goal? No, they just chalk up as a vacation. Yeah, yeah, Do you know yeah. what I mean? Like yeah. they're like, I'm gonna go somewhere where I can look like to the beach, relax and have fun. Got it, got and it, like, got it. Pa- you know, basically just, you know, yeah. fill out whatever paperwork they want. And, um, you know, my mother told me if I was really trying to ever be serious as a chef, which at the point in school I was cocky and I was going for yeah. it, they're like, you have to go to Gerard Boyer in France. So 
every morning at three o'clock in the morning, once a week on Mondays, I would call the Chateau in France uh, and I would get them at seven o'clock in the morning. And literally this kitchen would ring in their, I mean, this phone would ring in their kitchen. Yeah. And it'd be a, a French, a like, very classic French chef on the, end, the other end. And be like, hello, you know, like, and I'd be like, uh, bonjour, c'est uh, Spike Mendelssohn, the, the, the CIA. And I'd start my French thing and he'd be like, and the first phone call was like, okay, whatever. It's like, I'm sorry, we're not accepting kids, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, from yeah. American schools. Yeah, 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 yeah. And he'd hang up on me. So for seven months straight, I made that phone call. And uh, finally, uh, about a month before I was supposed to get approved for, for externship, uh, the French chef answered. He's like, and he goes, ah, oh, putain, chef, okay, on va, va t'accepter, right? So he basically like, oh, fuck, like, just leave me alone. Like, don't. <laughs> We're gonna ex- we're gonna send you an acceptance letter. Like, leave me alone. Like, we'll we'll have you over here. And sure enough, like two weeks later, I get my acceptance letter from Le Carrere and Gerard Boyer and his and his team there. And I was just like, there's that moment of persistence that you have, and it's like, and then like that was the next level of, okay, I'm gonna level up in this industry. Mm-hmm. And sure enough, I went to France, and you're only supposed to go for two months, but I didn't return for like a year. Damn. Yeah, so I just got lost in the north of France in the castle, and I worked through the Bagad. And so they kept you on. Yeah, they kept me on. Yeah, they kept me on, and uh, you know, and I was known as l'Américaine in the kitchen. Like, there's a ton of stories from from that. Sure. But basically, I produced like this thick, huge Bible study of French cuisine and Gerard Boyer's cuisine, and like all the recipes of the chateau, and like every th- single thing that you could possibly experience it. That's kind of what I submitted to school. And that's the only reason they accepted me back after being gone for a year. Yeah, yeah. Because they saw how hard, how hard I worked. So they just like re-registered me and then I finished school. So They didn't just like give you a degree after that? <laughs> they should have, right? That's what I felt like. <laughs> no, they want to make that money. Yeah. They want to re-enroll, like, re-enroll you for the second semester. But, but They really uh, do want to make that money. Yeah. Well, you know, it's a factory now. And that's kind of yeah. like the little, the little bit of like the grudge I have with my alma mater is that they, they, they really like put anybody out in the industry yeah. and it's misleading on resumes when you get someone with like a CIA. I'm not saying they're all like that, but yeah, like, yeah. it's, it's like, you know, you have to really meet that person and judge them. Yeah. yeah. You know, but also not have. everyone in your class spent seven months no. calling the same place no, exactly. every week. I mean, like, yeah, that's a mindset. Yeah. And a mentality. Yeah. Right. And it's the same if people are graduating now or when you were around graduation, right. There's going to be a couple people in there that get fixated on whatever their goal is and they're like, I'm yeah. on it. I'm calling, I'm calling. But I think it's important and I like, and I appreciate you sharing that that story because I think a lot of people look at someone who's achieved the level of success or notoriety in different spaces that you have and look at themselves and say, well, like it's easy, quote unquote, to open up a restaurant when you're Spike. Yeah. It's like, but yeah, yeah. but Spike invested a lot of time my life and getting <laughs> getting to a place where yeah you know you can double down on the work that you've done yeah or triple down on it yeah absolutely and and uh you know i often tell you know people tell me like what's like how to get in the, this industry and how to decide if like it's for me and um you know what i tell them before anything always before even going to school or investing in a restaurant or anything i was like go work at a restaurant for a year yeah and like do some dishes work on the line ask ask to tour around and do a couple other jobs and see if it's really you. Cause again, like that subculture we talk about, it really is that it's a different, it's a different human being yeah. that can in general, just service other human beings. So that's number one, right? Whether you're a server or you're cooking someone's meal or you're busting someone's table or you're washing someone's dishes or you're taking someone's reservation. It's like a service. Yeah. And that takes a certain type of wiring in a human being to be in that industry. So like getting that like vital experience of just on the job before investing yeah. anything is like probably the most important thing. The first step is is do that. And it's physically brutal. And it's physically brutal. My uh my wife has always worked in offices. Yeah. But she's a she is and this is subjective, but I have some objective evidence by other people in our lives and strangers that she's a really good baker. Yeah. And she never went to school for it. She's just a very good baker and she's very committed to working on on the on her baking skills and when we came back to dc in 2015 our whole thing was we're gonna what's the thing that we can't stop thinking about right the thing that we want to do and for her it was 
I wanted to try, she wanted to try working at a bakery. For me, it was coaching, and I'm still coaching. Yeah. And she walked into five bakeries. She got four interviews, and she got three offers where they would pay her to be like a pastry assistant. Yeah. Right? And the our calculus was, was, do you want to pay to go to school, or do you want to try and do this thing? So she tried to do this thing, and she worked in two different bakeries for four months. And she learned way more than she would have learned in the classroom. She learned more about her interest in the space than she would have learned in the classroom. Um, she also learned that... It's a brutal industry physically. Oh yeah, and so you got to be like three hundred percent interested. Yeah, and you have to have the fire that carries you through making two hundred pie crusts in like twenty four hours for right. Thanksgiving orders. Oh yeah, oh yeah, <laughs> like, dude, crazy stuff. Oh yeah, you know it's intense. So you went to CIA. CIA. You were in France. How did you go from what, what kind of took you from that the work as a chef into how many different food business, like how many restaurants do you have now? Different uh, brands. I have uh, We the Pizza, Good Stuff Eatery, Santa Rosa Taqueria. Those are like the restaurant fast casual brands under the Sunnyside Group. Then we have Plant Burger uh, that we just launched, which is super exciting. At and the Whole I feel Foods like in Silver Spring. It's the accumulation of everything I've done. What at the Whole Foods in Silver Spring? At the Whole Foods in Silver Spring, just so people can come, come, come check us out. <laughs> uh, coming to uh, Whole Foods near you soon. Okay, I like uh, that. We got a lot of locations uh, on the docket, so we're excited about that and our partnership. And we'll get to more of that in a, in a little bit. But um, but yeah, and then I have a consulting, you know, part of my brand as well. And I have Vim and Victor, which is a restaurant in Springfield and uh, in the St. James Sports Complex. Oh, nice. Yeah, uh, super awesome. You know. That looks, it looks amazing, the, that, that whole setup. Massive. Holy Massive. Crap. Yeah, we'd we'll love to have you. Come check yeah, it out. Yeah, yeah. But um, but yeah, and then, you know, some other sides, some side stuff, some other restaurant that we've closed. But in general, I think, you know, what I like to always, like, highlight on my career and, and um, is, you know, I've done a little bit of everything in the industry, which has been fun, right? Yeah. And it's kept things uh, very creative for me. And uh, and you know, and like you said at the beginning, it's like you you get distracted and you oh want to do all these different things, yeah, right? Yeah. So uh, for me, that's kind of like the thing. Like I, I like to do a lot of different projects. Mm -hmm. And as I get older, I'm, I want to probably focus a little bit more on certain ones. You know, that that's why I think we're really excited about Plant Burger. But, uh, but yeah, you know, I've done anything from three Michelin star dining and, and French restaurants to, you know, fast casuals to top chef and iron chef and consulting and catering. And like, I've had a really wealth of experience in, the, in totality in the industry, yeah. which has been a lot of fun uh, for me. And, and that's kind of, I think what makes me different. I haven't really just picked one lane, mm -hmm. like, Hey, I'm going to get three Michelin stars and do fine dining restaurant for the next 15, 20 years. Yeah. Kind of, you know, had, I'm lucky to have the opportunity to kind of chop it up a little bit. Yeah. So that's, and it works with, it matches your personality. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Exactly. It matches my personality. And I've always been a giving person and wanted to reinvest in the people that have shown me support yeah. in my career. So that's kind of like where the policy part comes into to play. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? So it's good. Like, I, I feel, I feel very blessed to be where I'm at, at in this day. It's a hard industry and, not many people get to like get out of the kitchen and maintain. Yeah. yeah. So and DC has been like, I feel like humming for a little while now. Oh, it's humming big time. Like I mean, there was an article when I first came onto the scene, which I got like raked over the coals uh, over where where it was. I think it was something like I mentioned in an article. I said, you know, DC is a second tier city when it comes to food. Oh, you got raked over the coals by locals. Yeah, locals. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> locals. And and they were like so mad. I mean, my PR team, which is Charlie from the door, uh, had a great. You know, uh, he, he basically said uh, I tweeted or something. No, we didn't even have a tweet. I, I had an article saying like I'll give out free hugs to whoever insulted. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Some people came came by the restaurant and took some free hugs, which was great. That's cool. That's good. Yeah, but. It, but it was, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. I wasn't, you know, I wasn't speaking, you, you know, there, there had been like Eric Repair, which had a West End Bistro, yeah. Michel Richard, which is like an old yeah, school chef from here, yeah, yeah, Citronelle, yeah. all those. Yeah, yeah, There had been a couple of chefs. Like down in Georgetown, yeah. Jose Andreas was yeah, here. There, there had been a couple chefs. Yeah, yeah, But was I wrong? Like, fast, you know, fast forward 10 years later, oh, it's huge, now man. it's buzzing. Now it's, yeah, yeah. it's a, you know number one tier food city just like new york or yeah. chicago or la and if not i mean when i left it's amazing i went to know. chicago in 2011 yeah and one of the things that my then girlfriend and my wife were talking about was like we feel like we've been to all the places yeah and like it's kind of like it's fine to go back to them but it's not there isn't anything like innovative or exciting yeah and when we came back in 2015 four years 
dude, Bad Saint was popping, Roses was popping, Bad, exactly. like all of a sudden there were all these places that were popping up and they were like hits, like people yeah. like loved them, Bon Appetit loved them. And we're at the WeWork on 14th of Florida, we're like above Maidan, like- Yeah, a Michelin star restaurant. I think we're sitting above the hostess area right now. Yeah, I mean like- I think we are literally above a one Michelin star restaurant Yeah, right exactly, now. you know, like there's, there's, there's a lot more happening. Lots more happening, a lot of entrepreneurs. I mean, when, you know, the previous administration got elected. You had like a renaissance yeah. of young people coming to the city, yeah, Republican yeah. and Democratic alike, all with these big ideas. All these chefs, you know, I and remember like money. every chefs wanted to be in DC. Like I got tons of calls about what's yeah. the scene like there, what's going on. And uh, before you know it, I mean, you have Daniel Blue has a restaurant here. You know, Alan Ducasse had a restaurant in the St. Regis. You know, these are, we're talking about big chefs and then young, young yeah, chefs yeah. as well. So it's been a pleasure to see DC just kind of like, you know. The Dabney. Yeah, the Dabney. I mean, they're, I mean, listen, there's so, there's too many to name. There's, there are. There's too many to yeah, name. And, you know, <clears throat> the other cool thing about DC, the food scene is like, it's also the intersection where food can meet technology and meet, and also meet policy. Yeah. yeah. And that, really you know brings a lot of unique uh, opportunities for everyone here too 100%. so so let's I, mean, I, I don't know if this is a good segue or not but like yeah. thinking about plant burger which i know like looking at the mission that jonah shared and, and you read off the shirt um what are y'all working on there what's what's popping yeah i mean like you know jonah i'll let you tap in here because i've been talking but in general I, I mean we're working on on uh changing the world not waiting for it to change yeah. <laughs> i'm teasing jonah because does that song play every time you walk in the door hey, uh, yeah. well you know i was unbeknownst to me while we were watching a ufc fight the other night out of nowhere jonah goes i really hate that, that john well hate's a strong word i really dislike john Mayer. i'm like okay. we're like all right well he's and we were like why he's like he's just waiting for the world to change <laughs> he's like that. do something so uh, you know, uh, <laughs> it's true. It's the wrong. It's the wrong message to send to the to this new generation. Don't yeah. wait for anything to change. Be active. Take well, that's yeah. take matters in your own hands. Yeah, and so I thought it was funny. So I've been teasing about it lately, but but really, it, it's kind of what we're doing with Plant Burger. So you know, we've been introduced. You know, I was introduced to an amazing new ingredient about two years ago by Seth Goldman. Um, yeah, yeah, and uh, you know, it was. Beyond Meat. Beyond Meat. Yeah, basically at a panel. And Disclosure, I'm a, I'm a shareholder. Yes. Not a big one. Are you? Not a big one. So just I, just yeah, privately. I find it so are you. Too. We're all shareholders. And, and we're all Jewish. I imagine that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, all right. So, yeah. So, so we're, you know, it, you know, for a guy that is in the burger business, yeah. you know, and loves burgers, loves meat, yeah. um, you know, uh, this family really has uh, challenged me to, to think about the plant burger family. Yeah, the, yeah. well, the Goldman family Goldman in general family. Okay, yeah. uh, has just challenged me to think about things a little differently on, on how we grow our food, what we use. And again, I still like, you know, uh, meat protein, you know, animal meat protein, but I, I like picking my moments a little bit more when it comes to eating those the those uh, in, you know ingredients. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but the amazing thing about Beyond Meat was um, that. It was delicious, yeah. you know, and that it was, uh, my wife's vegan, so she was like, you know, I took it back home, I cooked it up, and we were all like, this is amazing, tastes exactly like a hamburger that I would make. Sure, sure. Uh, and kind of a, little, a light bulb went out a little bit, and I started teasing this idea of opening up a 100% plant-based burger spot. That doesn't really scream veganism or vegetarianism. Yeah, yeah. It's just like for everybody. It's just good food. It's just good food. It's just good food. Yeah. And that was like the small idea. Yeah. And then, you know, working with the Goldmans and, and everyone, the team, and this this idea has just got heightened. And then yeah. it was like, oh, but look at the environmental, the effect on the environmental footprint we can have. Yeah, for sure. You know, oh, well, think about climate change and, and the respects on how this is a climate change concept. For sure. It's not just like a restaurant. No, no. You know, our fast casual, it's got a huge mission behind it. And, you know, I'd love, you know, I think that's a good segue to Jonah to talk a little bit more about what we're doing with Plant and, and you know, all the good stuff. What's going on, yeah. Yeah. Um, but also, I think what's so exciting about your story, just to round it off, is like in the latter half of your career, you really have taken matters into your own hands, right? Um, and I don't know if you know, but Chef Spike is, is the chairman of the D.C. Food Policy Council mm -hmm. as well and does a lot of important work to create... Um, a just and equitable food system 
uh, both in the region and thinking about how we can do that through business. And that's what's so exciting about the proposition of a concept restaurant that um, serves people their favorite foods, the classics, the burgers, fries, and shakes we all know and love, yeah. uh, but does it in a way that is sublime and much better for the environment. Uh, and then, of course, has other benefits in that it you know is free of cholesterol and uh, less saturated fat and um, not linked to heart disease, the number one killer of humans. So, yeah. Um, yeah. So uh, we'll get back to Plant Burger. Um, the name, which we started off the podcast with, <laughs> is, is, uh, is right. You've you picked up on it. It's PLNT, um, which is intentionally ambiguous. It can be plant. It can be planet. Mm. It can be plenty, pollinate, pleasant, wow. anything with PLNT <laughs> in it. Um, and we hope to evoke that with our logo as well. I love it. See, um, I don't, I don't have a good enough grasp of spelling to pick that up. <laughs> but my wife would have seen it. Yeah, yeah. She's like a boggle master. So. Well, I was just about to say you're talking to a boggle master right now. So we should get your wife and Jared <laughs> and my wife together because they all love boggle. <laughs> yeah. But that's good. No, now that you say it, um, I won't be able to look at it without thinking that, which is, which is great. And you also, even with the logo, you've got now I'm seeing like you know a little bit more of that circle. It could also be you know like Earth or something like that. Absolutely. You know, versus just a profile of a burger. Totally. Yeah. Yeah, nice. I encourage all the listeners to go check out our social pages or our website and just ask yourself, what do you see when you look at the logo? That's awesome. Uh, our designers, I think, did a good job of combining all of those areas. So besides, now I'm curious, besides obviously, you, you know, Spike, you're interested in food and your background in food in the literal, maybe unlimited ways that you've experienced the industry and, and Jonah, you know, with what you're, with your interest in Plant Burger, like how did this, how did it start? Like, Maybe it was you, maybe it was Spike, I don't know, but where did, where did it start and what took it from, oh, this is an interesting idea, to let's put some energy here? I'm always curious about that part of this, the process. Yeah, I mean, I, I think, you know, I think we took a, a, you know, I have to say I had, I had this, Seth made the, the first movement, right, by like handing me burgers that I've never eaten before, right, sure. beyond me. So that's kind of what sparked the idea originally. Yeah. Uh, and then I, I had the opportunity to work with Beyond Meat very, you know, uh, not in, under contract or anything like that, but just just to develop some recipes and like some vi videos for yeah. the product. Yeah. Uh, then we did a launch of, of Beyond Sausage and we started getting Which is know, my favorite Beyond Meat product, by mm -hmm. the way, is Which the is, sausage. Yeah, I mean, it's, very good. it's a lot of people's favorite product, I yeah. believe, right? Yeah. 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 And, then, um, and then Seth and I just started talking a little bit more and... He told me about, you know, his son's background, which I didn't know Jonah back then. He was living in Israel at, at the time. There you he, go. He just got back here. Tel Aviv. Four the months ago. Highest concentration of vegan restaurants in the world. Well, there you go. So, like, we had a specialist <laughs> in not only policy, but also, you know, someone that had inspired his parents years ago about becoming vegan and vegetarian. So, like, the whole reason, you know, Seth and, 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 his, and his, uh, Julie Farkas, his, his mother, are vegan is because of Jonah. And I think a lot of like the moves that they made in business, not only honesty but also beyond me, has drive by the first inspiration years ago, right? And that's really, I mean, you know, you can take, you can yeah, say you that. tell us that's true, right? right? No, yeah. Don't so blush. He's actually going to, go to Paris to talk about this exact subject on a panel uh, with with the family. So there you go. I, I might jump on the trip too, but yeah, yeah, but, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> seriously. Um, yeah, well, you know, I, I don't want to take full credit. I think everything has a, you know, a reaction in life. So, um, but yeah, ever since I was, I was 10, I was really interested in learning more about food systems, where our food comes from. Uh, and the more I learned, the more horrified I became by the state of, of the food system, not only in America, but the global food system. Um, and so, uh, yeah, I made it a point to try and, um, and live by my values and, and work through agriculture and through policy, uh, at least through, through my um, academic and then professional career for a healthier, more resilient uh, and just food system for all. Um, and so, yeah, along the way, I worked for great companies like an early Beyond Meat in 2013 and then on farms and uh, with Michael Bennett in 2015 and, and politicians and then I moved to Israel where I worked in uh, sustainable agriculture. I worked in compostable packaging for a company that uh, develops and designs um, compostable, flexible uh, packaging, essentially, to replace single-use plastic. Um, and it had always been, you know, a desire of mine to help build the vegan McDonald's or to build a, a plant-based fast food chain. 
And so, um, you know, I had met Spike around a year and a half ago. Uh, and this is fast. I like this. Been, yeah. 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 There's, a, there's a spot up now already. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <You're> done. <laughs> and so we'd been teasing out the idea a little bit, but um, finally I had the chance to hop on a call with Spike and, and with the rest of the founding team and kind of talk about what it would look like and start getting creative. Um, and how do we realize this idea? How do we implement it correctly? And that to me was just the most exciting conversation and not that what I was doing wasn't also sure. captivating. Um, I really do believe that we need better packaging and, and more ecological solutions to um, packaging in our, in our food system and in our fashion industry. Uh, but nothing really excited me like when I was speaking to Spike about the idea of giving kids seed packets or um, trying, trying to help people who just love a good burger and they're conscious of the health and environmental impacts. That same experience that they're craving but without the other um, negative downsides. Yeah. And so you, really you give seed packs at the restaurant? Well, yeah. So that's part of our mission is, uh, you know, we, we have uh, the, um, the uh, Sprout Sprout's, meals. Sprouts meal. And uh, the idea was, is like, you know, oh, instead of the toy. Instead of the toy. Instead of a plastic oh, toy. Dude, I love that. So we give seed package <laughs> and, and you could <laughs> yeah, go great. on our website and look about, learn about how to plant or what to plant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And basically it's like plant a seed and see what sprouts. You know, yeah, we don't yeah, yeah, yeah. we don't really tell you what's in the package. So it's yeah. like a surprise pack. You have to grow to see it. Hundred percent. So that was just a, like, you know, our our way of just kind of you know, it's funny that you say about the McDonald's thing because <clears throat> five years ago before I was into any food policy at all. Uh, Chef Action Network, which is a James Beard funded mm -hmm. uh, um, uh, program that takes chefs and musicians and puts them like on these boot camps. <clears throat> Excuse me, to learn about how to have their voice, right? Yeah. And I think Jack Johnson was actually in my group, which mm. was super crazy because I'm a big fan of his. But I remember we were going. Any to problem with Jack Johnson over here? Or not the no, no, I don't think okay. he. I think he's clear. Actually, okay. <laughs> he was. You know, he's against plastic. So that uh, Jonah loves that. So uh, you know, and the funny thing was, is like we were all going in like a round circle on like why we're here. Mm -hmm. You know, and like the question was like why you're here at this boot camp, and like the thing that like just like spilled out of my mouth, and I don't even know why I said it. I was like, oh, I want to take McDonald's down, and that was like kind of like my statement and policy and I was like okay I think I'm gonna get like killed now in the next the yeah. next week it's like I'm on record trying to say I want to take McDonald's down but what I was trying to say is that I was a huge fan of McDonald's growing up my grandmother used to take me there it was yeah. like a memory I had yeah, I yeah. used to get a toy myself I used to eat this burger for sure I love this Big Mac it's a nostalgic I mean it's culture it's a culture in the United States it's I culture died. it's yeah. culture yeah and but you know we really depend on like the people that are driving culture yeah to actually make it right yeah. Right. And I think, unfortunately, McDonald's has like done a disservice to the food industry yeah, yeah. in so many ways. And it's trickled down. Mm -hmm. Right. And they've also packaged it up with like a lot of like ads to kids and like this happy lifestyle. Yeah. And the truth is, uh, you know, and hopefully, you know, they're making moves within the company to kind of change this. Yeah, yeah, right. For sure. uh, is what they're serving people isn't really great and that the way it's grown is not really great and it's not like sustainable, right? Yeah. Um, so the idea of being able to enter the burger space and do have like be part of this better burger movement, I did it with Good Stuff a long time ago, right? Sure. A lot of local food still, animal, you know, animal yeah, meat sure. and all that kind of stuff, but our, you know, our food's elevated there, right? And we, we source, you know, this plant burger is just doubling down even more on, on you know, on, on like building this new culture and, and and awareness about our planet, which is which is so fun. So yeah, I think it's huge, and I think you know, Jonah, you mentioned that it's there are so many components that go into making things better. You know, and it's not just the ingredients. You even talked about the packaging. You know, and in your work in in Israel, it, it's going to take a lot. Yeah. Right? And I always go back to any kind of change. I always go back to, and I'm not like a super fit person. But everyone knows overall the things that you need to do to be like really healthy and really fit. Yeah. And it's not one thing. Right. And it's not even two or three things. It's a lot of things. Yeah. Right. It's like hydration. It's sleeping right. It's eating the right things. It's working out. It's doing the right kinds of workouts and more than one kind of workout. And like when I think about like the planet and when I think or even business, there are all these little things that you have to do. Yeah. And you have to do them every day. Yeah. you know, to achieve those results. So like this as a business sounds like you get to play on, on multiple levels. You got the ingredients. Like you said, you have the story, 
like the sprout meal. Yeah. Right. So you're, you're edu- there's an educational piece. You get to choose the vendors that you work with. You get to choose the materials. I'm assuming that you get to bring in. Yeah. Oh so yeah. I would love like, just curious. So you had that call a year and a half ago and maybe even from your perspective, specifically Jonah, like what, what's the process been like? There was this call. When did things start getting real? That was, uh, that was the moment I think. Yeah. I mean, it had been leading up to that okay. um, for some time, but I really believe that the potential for a huge impact with what we're doing at Plant Burger is um, unlimited. Um, and that was such a phenomenally exciting opportunity for me to dive headfirst into what I've always loved, which is the food industry, mm-hmm. my favorite food, which happens to be burgers, <laughs> and trying to democratize something that really hasn't been available or accessible to the majority of the population for a very, very long time. So what are you democratizing in this situation? Plant-based foods. Okay, cool, cool. Um, yeah, and, and for the longest time, you know, I grew up vegetarian in my family. I converted them all, as you heard. When did you start becoming a vegetarian? When did you start this process as a vegetarian? Uh, at, at 10 years old, I, I visited an animal sanctuary. And as a child, making the connection between how amazing and fun animals are and how lovable they are as creatures to the fact that we eat them was pretty traumatic. And, and then I ex, you know, had access to YouTube. Uh, which for a curious <laughs> 10-year-old is Could potentially a, traumatizing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you can imagine. I mean, it was. You probably, I mean, I've seen the Netflix documentaries <laughs> with slaughterhouses. Yeah. It yeah. is not pretty. No, yeah. no, not at all. And when you're, when you're that young, you see things very clearly. And so I just saw this dissonance in society that people yeah. love their pets. They would never dream of harming animals. Um, and yet our industrial agricultural system uh, is responsible for, and we're complicit in, uh, what amounts to, you know, confinement and torture and slaughter of um, billions and billions of animals every year. Yeah, yeah. And so that, as a child, is really difficult to wrap your mind around. Uh, but it, it struck me that I can do something in my life to kind of try and, and live up to my values, um, which is to stop eating those products or to be conscious about where those products come from and ensure that they come from the right place, which is a perspective I've adopted later in life. Um, but... To me, it seemed clear as day. Like, if we love animals, why would we want to, you know, raise and slaughter them? Um, and I, I had a really radical and extremist point of view growing up. And as I've... Like as a 10, 11, 12-year-old? Even through 18. Okay. You know, and, and some would say even today. But okay. I, I think I've become a lot more, more realistic and modern. He's been at the climate march every year. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, depends on, it depends on what lobbying firm you ask. <laughs> yeah. So, no, and, and uh, but what's so cool James about Fonda this, and Jonah are like this. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, what's so cool about this restaurant and this moment in time is for the first time ever, or a couple things, for the first time ever, I believe... Veggie burgers don't taste like crap. Not only do they not taste like crap, they taste really good. Yeah, yeah. Um, some would say indistinguishable. We serve a lot of people who don't realize that they're eating a plant-based burger, uh, and they come to us saying, "This you is can the feel, best burger." You can burger. feel it right here. The fat hits you right in your yeah. Yeah. in your sort of throat. You can feel the fat from me. <laughs> yeah. Well, so so that's and 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 uh, what's so also um, thrilling about the moment in food technology is now we know okay we can create something that tastes like meat, using plants. So why can't we taste something that, why can't we create something that tastes even better? Um, and it's only going to get better from this moment on. I love you know? it. And so uh, it seems like that's the easiest way to shift the paradigm. And what's really also uh, amazing about plant burgers, it's not about attacking anyone. This is a, mo- this is a movement for everybody. Uh, anyone who loves burgers, everyone, you know, and, and 50 billion burgers are consumed in America every year. Uh, and, and there's clearly an environmental cost and a health cost yeah. associated with that. Um, and so we're not attacking anyone's choices. We're not telling people to become vegan. We're not telling them to become vegetarian. We're inviting them in for a burger that every single bite you take, you should feel good about because you're saving a huge volume of water, a massive amount of land, huge amount of greenhouse gases. Um, and we tell people, you know, it's 99% less water, 93% less land, 90% fewer greenhouse gas emissions, 100% less animal. Uh, and so it's just less complicated. But what's so interesting is like, it's such a huge, like we talked about, it's a huge part of our identity. It's a part of yeah. our culture. It's literally in the States when we, yeah, yeah in the yeah, States yeah. and in and, and, and a lot of, so a lot of the, parts lot of, of the world. Yeah, for sure. And so people are so deeply attached to it. We can't separate. We shouldn't even, I don't think at this point. Uh, attack it because we're going to 
you know, alienate, yeah. alienate yeah. everybody. Yeah. Um, but come and join us and, and have a delicious burger, eat the chain, see how good it feels. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then uh, slowly but surely gain momentum. I, I think there were a couple moments along the way, too, uh, just to get back to the, yeah, yeah, yeah. that, you know, I think Jonah and his family came in for a, a tasting. Yeah. Right. Obviously, like, we needed to own up for the idea. We have Mike, which is not in here. We don't let him on podcasts because uh, yeah, he's got headphones on. You can see the way he's dressed. Yeah, exactly. You don't want him on a podcast. <laughs> yeah, no. And then uh, he's an angel. He's yeah. an amazing chef. Too. Yeah, yeah, he's <laughs> amazing. No, he's amazing. Uh, big t- teddy bear over there. But but um, so first, like the challenge was: is it as delicious or better? Yeah. Right. We checked that box. Then we said, I think. Another aha moment is when we started uh, working with our um, our design and brand team, mm. right? And then you have a bunch of ideas on a paper, right? And you, you just brought this new group of people together to work on something. And uh, when a branding team can so easily take it and make it really real and like redistribute back to you what your vision is. That's the best. Right? That's the best feeling in the world. So when when we saw that logo... It mean it meant everything to us, and and then there was a lot of excitement, right? So when you had the conversation a year and a half ago about where did the logo show up in the path? About like five, six months ago. Okay, right? Yeah, it was right around that time. Right, right around that, and we had a couple of tastings before that. Yeah. We had, were talking strategy yeah. before that, and our strategy was to go with Whole Foods. And there's a whole other side to that story sure, sure, of sure. why Whole Foods and why that was amazing. Yeah, um, and I think the other moment, right? Because we still didn't know what was happening, right? I mean, moving fast. Moving, it was moving yeah, fast. Yeah, yeah. So, like, we we didn't have too much time to think. We we're just like, we gotta go, we gotta go. Because yeah. there's also like, I, I think I was putting a lot of pressure on everybody because I was believing in this like two years ago. But I was also watching everybody else, yeah, yeah. right? And I was watching like Michael Simon put a burger on his menu, and I was watching J- Josh Capon, which is a meat guy in New York and owns a ton of meat restaurants. And you know, we share a lot of burger titles together and sure. like start to do stuff. So I was starting to see this industry get buy-in from chefs. As soon as you get the buy-in from chefs, then it's like it's everywhere. So I wanted to be hit first to market. So there was, to your point, there was like no time to waste. But after our first week of business in Whole Foods is when we really had a moment amongst all of us. And we said, okay, like it's go, it's go time. Because the most interesting part about the Whole Foods experience is, um, well, one is sourcing, Right. Not many can. Not many brands can own up through and through a hundred percent to sourcing and what mm-hmm. what they're doing. So when we were working with Whole Foods, you know, we were handed a book on rules and regulations on what we can use and what we can't use. So the idea was, is you know, for us, like working really hard on 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 picking the ingredients that we use, uh, was something that Whole Foods really helped us, uh, you know, accomplish. So we're a hundred percent Whole Foods approved. Our sourcing is impeccable. You know what you see is what you get, and it's all true. Yeah. Uh, are we? Are we? You know, you're good. Okay. And then, and then uh, the other part of it is is that our customer base, right? When when Jonah talks about de- macros, de- uh, democratizing. De- yeah, I'm not back to the bog- back, back, back to the boggle thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> back, back to the boggle. Democratizing our uh, our thing here uh, is is what he's really essentially talking about is that a lot of times, well, food to begin with, is always looked at as a privilege, not a right. But more so even the plant-based, you know, uh, movement. So for us, being able to offer a plant-based delicious option for Mm -hmm. people at a really good price is number one, right? Because you see a lot of other, like, plant-based burgers out there in the market. They're $12, they're $18. It's very an elitist ingredient. For sure. People are looking at that. But what we managed to do is make it for everyone. And we saw that because we opened up in Silver Spring. Yeah. It's a massively culturally diverse area. Yeah, it's amazing. Area. And, I grew up in Tacoma Park. Yeah, yeah right and a lot of people pay with cash. Yeah. So, you know, it's a it's a lot of low-income people that are looking to take... You take cash? Yeah, we take That's cash. Good. 100% we take cash. You know, people receive on average. But people don't think about that. Yeah. Well, just, we do. Like, that's what I'm know, saying. Like, yeah, people, yeah. not everyone has a bank account. Yeah. Not everyone has a credit card. Yeah. People live paycheck to pe- paycheck. They yeah. go cash their checks. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, people, it's, yeah. we're still cash America. 
guys, yeah, you know? Mm-hmm. Like Bitcoin burger and all that, all this stuff yeah. is like nonsense. The real problem is 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 people are still only able to pay in cash. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. So for, for us it was like a no brainer and I think we were been very pleasantly surprised on exactly who our customer base is. Sure knowing that it's not an elitist uh, brand yeah. by any means. So yeah, That's awesome. Listen, I have a feeling that we could talk until it gets dark and it's winter, so it gets dark pretty soon. But yeah. just in general, I think we should have more conversations. Yeah, we'd love to be back because yeah. this was great. Yeah, I appreciate it. the yeah. two of you being down the surface, here. by the way. Yeah. Like, no, no, literally. I thought, I, you said, I thought you said three hours for us. I know, what I know. is this? We're getting kicked out of a room I again? I I Jesus. Um, <laughs> I'm working on a studio. I don't have one yet. Yeah. Um, but... Spike, Jonah, I really appreciate you coming down, being on the founder's mind. Uh, where should people look? We talked about a bunch of stuff. Where should people look? What are we talking about? Yeah, well, people should definitely follow uh, plnt.com, right? Mm-hmm. Burger.com. Bur- yeah. uh, plntburger.com. I know our website. Right, right. Jonah. I'll put it in the notes, too. Yeah, <laughs> we'll put it in the notes. Uh, you can follow me uh, at Chef Spike uh, on Twitter and Spike the Chef on uh, Instagram. I think Jonah also has some handles. Yeah, yeah, at plntburger. Um, and most importantly, come by and visit us. At yeah, we yeah, want, if you're local. Come but... taste the greatness, eat the change, be a part of this yeah, yeah. fantastic movement. It's all about reclaiming our health and our food systems and doing it in a way that's freaking delicious i love it i love it thank you so much yes thank you for listening to this episode of the founder's mind check back regularly for new episodes if you like what you're hearing we'd love your support sign up to be a funder of the founder's mind to support the show you can go to the show notes or head to thefoundersmind.com and click on the funder link To make sure you don't miss any awesome wisdom from guests and stay up to date on the most recent episodes of the show, be sure to visit thefoundersmind.com. You can also follow along on social at The Founders Mind. Last but not least, a thank you to Roy Matz for the music on this show and his dope editing skills that make The Founders Mind possible. Until next time, take care. In a world going through all of this insanity and try to bring new ideas, make them a reality. Illuminate in the thoughts, make it a priority to implement what you learn, what you get is what you be. In a world full of noise, hard to find that clarity to try to lead subtly, never full of vanity. And try to change something small or try to change humanity. Power forward through the dark, founder's mind is what you see. Mind is what you see.